Today, we're gonna to take a look at a report from Headset on vaping as the second most popular category behind flower in the US and third most popular category in Canada. Vape pens clearly capturing the attention of consumers in both countries. These products are far removed from the cannabis plant in its natural form. Vape pens are providing consumers with convenience and portability and the ability to enjoy a reliable and repeatable experience. These features, along with an increasing sophistication of extraction methods and hardware technologies, are driving the vape pen category to a prominent position in the U.S. and Canadian cannabis consumer market. So we're going to explore this new school cannabis category and headsets report and give you, once again, uh, the past performance of vape pens, along with a breakdown of product segment, demographics, pricing, and more, all coming up. It's only entertainment. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. So the market share of vape pens hasn't changed a whole lot in the U.S. and Canada. And so looking at um, being the second largest category behind flour, followed by pre-rolls and then edibles in Canada, still the third largest category behind flour and pre-rolls, although flour is uh, dominating both markets. Vape pens are gaining market share in each country and that's uh, demonstrating that um, you know vape pens are convenient, and it's it's a matter of you know not having the stigma or smell associated with it. It's not my go-to, but I always have a vape pen with me personally because of the convenience factor. So I could go to uh, a conference, whether it's cannabis or not, no one's going to really care or know or smell it. So there's not going to be that a uh, attached associated stigma if I were to smoke flour, which is my preferred preferred uh, form in a cylindrical joint or blunt, you know, hemp wrap blunt, uh, as my go-to, but I can't smoke a blunt and then go back into uh, a conference, even in Vegas, you know, people smoke cigars, but you smoke a blunt, it, it's um, overpowering the smell, you get in an elevator and you're going to freak a bunch of people out. <laughs> Market shares change over time in the U.S. Vape pens still haven't returned to their record high of 24% right before the pandemic. And then since September 2020, market share increasing steadily with a larger period of growth in the last half of 2021, now back above 20%. The growth could be driven by a variety of factors that could include the ending the pandemic lockdowns and return to normal lifestyles. And so that's you know about going out and not smoking flour because you're around people again. So it's about convenience, portability, uh, all of those things that made it uh, popular in the first place. So similar story with the Canadian marketplace after dropping significantly the market share for vape pens, kind of posting a, a strong comeback in the second half of 2021, growing from 15% to 17% market share, uh, recording a 17% high in January, uh, and then could kind of continue around that that percentage there. Um, summer still around, so that might increase a little bit more as people kind of get out and about. We'll have to see. And then breaking that down into individual states and provincial cannabis markets. Among legacy U.S. markets, California, the largest market share has 24%. Illinois and Arizona have a higher market share with more than a quarter of total cannabis sales going to that category. They're more conservative. They're going to have less pre-rolls, more vape pens. Makes sense. In the U.S., Nevada saw the largest increase in market share, growing from 15% to 21%. There's a lot of tourists there. And again, tourists, you're not allowed to smoke cannabis in the casinos. People don't really want to smoke it on the strip. And there's not a lot of um, cafes to go to, you know, cannabis shops or um, marijuana lounges. So uh, it's probably more going to be out of convenience, I guess. And I'm guessing they're probably buying the disposable ones and not, you know, the C3 rechargeable um, C cell carts. You're seeing in Canada, Saskatchewan, the strongest growth there from 18% to 23%. Michigan is the only market that experienced a decrease, dropping from 19.6 to 19.3. That's pretty insignificant. BC, lowest market share debate pens. Uh, they got a ton of facilities where you can go and smoke from the New Amsterdam Cafe. Um, I'm forgetting uh, Mark's place, uh, Culture Lounge. They got a, a few spots up in BC to go and smoke. And so uh, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares in BC. Who is buying? Looking at demographics on who's buying so far. Customers are choosing bait pens. Um, relatively less as age goes goes up. 
So for example, consumers in Gen Z tend to contribute roughly double their total canvas spend of vape pens compared to those in the baby boomer generation because the Gen Z is out and about and smoking um, during the day versus baby boomers probably go home and do a nightcap. Um, I see a lot of Gen Z folks at work doing work they don't want to be doing and they're just out there, you know, ripping their, their vape pens. It's pretty obvious if you can tell by the, the style of the vape pen as, as well as the smoke, you can tell what's tobacco, what's not. Uh, so a lot of those folks, I think, are just trying to get through their day. Uh, within most of the age groups, female consumers tend to have slightly higher wallet share than male counterparts. And you can see the, the opposite. It's inverse to flower. More males are buying flower. More females are buying vape pens. And then um, <clears throat> Gen Z is the exception to that. In Canada and the U.S., category is dominant sales of, of carts on all-in-one disposables are the next most popular segment at around 12%. Uh, that's an increase of about 10% from just last year. In Canada, it's even less. It's only 4.20%. Hey, <laughs> that's a decrease of almost 6%, though. So it's kind of trailing downwards. Sales in the all in one rechargeable products uh, for the reusable batteries that are sold together, they've declined a small portion. So maybe the people who tried it liked it and then graduated to um, you know the individual components where you have your atomizer separate from your cart uh, and then um, this is cheaper that way. One gram carts, and I won't spend more than like $40 now. Those pens have come down 50, or the, the carts have come down 50%. Those same um, carts that I like for from Avatos that are like live resin um, uh, or live rosin. They're, they were $80 to begin with. I, I don't like the additional uh, cutting agents or anything that some people have. And that's why Stizzy, I guess, is somewhat popular, even though I didn't particularly like it. I had a vape cart from them. wasn't great. Um, really expensive for half a gram. One trend that uh, tr the headset has been tracking in the vape pen category has been the rise of proprietary hardware systems like Stizzy. Normally, the vape pens had a universal format, that 510 thread, but there's been a lot of people who have kind of gone off the, the rails on that. PAX is kind of annoying. Um, you see the PAX pods, for example, and then Stizzy. Um, and that's not going to get folks like me to, to try it. Um, it, it did because um, I was down in California, ran out, and I really wanted to try uh, Stizzy. And so I tried a, a, a half a gram uh, disposable. Um, so that's, I guess that's the exception if you want to try something, but you know, why not keep it universal? It wasn't super annoying when we all had, do you remember when cell phones had different chargers for everything? And it literally was a, it made a congressional act, <laughs> you know, these old crusty farts in Capitol Hill that made that change. Uh, and now like what we are going to have different fate pen batteries. Like, I think that's stupid. We should all have a universal one so that we can try different stuff. I think it's, um, uh, I don't know. I think it's it's uh, going to kneecap the industry by having different stuff. It's um, not something that I would do, but Stizzy's on their own path. Looking at average price, or the average equalized price of vape pen products in the U.S. and Canada, that price per gram of vape pen products across all segments and packaging sizes um, in Canada started off high, as it always does. When it hit the store shelves and then declined through the first two months of the year, I mentioned that they were eighty dollars in Washington. Now they're forty in California. Remember when they were like eighty bucks for just a gram of concentrate, and carts were also eighty to one hundred and twenty in Illinois when they first came out. But everything always comes back down after um, those greedy bastards realize they can't get that money anymore. But as soon as the doors first open, it's just stupid how high these prices are, and they claim that it's supply and demand. Kind of the same BS they're feeding you right now with why gas prices are so high. Uh, while the trend is less dramatic in the U.S., prices are also decreasing with the average EQ price for bait pens dropping 15% from 38 bucks in April of 2021 to $32 this last year. In Canada, that same price dropped 32% as well, down to you know, 43 bucks. So overall, we're seeing a long way over from the last two years from relatively recent growth from uh, what we saw in the 2.0 rollout in Canada and then uh, during the pandemic, just over the last two years, dealing with concerns around the uh, vape pen, vape gate, you know, the 
that whole crisis that came out. So a lot has happened to this industry or to this segment. Uh, and that's going to kind of take some, some time to uh, iron out, I think, between um, conservative markets and pre-roll loving markets like Washington. Uh, the brands are going to have to have less glycol or whatever the cutting agent is to have more live resin, live rosin products out there uh, that don't kind of um, scratch your throat or whatever. Uh, more branding, more trustworthy products where you don't have to worry about uh, vitamin E acetate or all these other uh, crazy issues with, with vape gate. Um, so the convenience factor, the pricing, all of those things are great, but it's also going to be a trust factor and branding as well. So for all of that, you have to come back to the talking hedge. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the talking hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.